Hi, this is Alex Donahay, and we'll be talking about scapular winging. So by definition, scapular winging is a condition characterized by the abnormal protrusion or positioning of the scapula relative to the thoracic wall, and we'll be more specific on that. Um, it can often lead to functional impairment and oftentimes pain. So in being more specific, we can describe this as being medial or lateral winging. Medial shown in green, lateral shown in red. Um, as a tip, try not to memorize um, definitions. Try to think about what muscles um, pull the scapula in what direction, and with injury to the muscle or nerve, um, what result we'll get, what, what winging we'll get. So with medial scapular winging, typically we're thinking dysfunction of the serratus anterior muscle, which is innervated by the long thoracic nerve. So we're thinking long thoracic nerve injury. So the serratus anterior acts to hold the scapula flush against the posterior chest wall. So if you have dysfunction of the long thoracic nerve, dysfunction of the serratus anterior, you're going to see the medial border of the scapula protruding from the, from the back of the chest wall. And you may get a little bit of downward rotation. And you can see this clearly uh, in both pictures here. So how do we examine this? Um, typically, we're going to want the patient to flex the shoulders and protrude forward. So having them um, lean up or push against a wall can really bring this out. Um, during this motion, again, the serratus anterior should really hold the scapula flush against the chest wall. Um, and you'll oftentimes see a nice shadow and a protrusion there of the, of the scapula. The long thoracic nerve um, can be injured through trauma, um, oftentimes stretch injuries through repetitive strain, through autoimmune or idiopathic conditions, um, thinking Parsonage-Turner syndrome, or iatrogenic causes, including surgical procedures. So how do we examine this on EMG? Um, we're going to want to be looking for uh, denervation or neuropathic findings um, isolated to the serratus anterior. Or if we're thinking a more systemic condition causing scapular winging, we may see neuropathic um, findings elsewhere. But this shows you the location that we're going to be looking for the serratus anterior. A typical um, point we're going to be needling is thinking fourth through seventh rib. Um, you're going to palpate the rib, and you're going to um, dive the needle into the serratus anterior muscle. Um, using the rib uh, as a backstop, a safety backstop, you're going, to make, you're going to want to make sure you're in front of the latissimus dorsi as well or anterior to the latissimus dorsi. So when thinking about lateral scapular winging, most commonly we're thinking trapezius muscle dysfunction, um, which is often a result of injury to the spinal accessory nerve. So if we think about what the trapezius does, um, it acts to elevate and it acts to elevate uh, the scapula. It has a bit of medial pull to it as well, especially in the, the middle and uh, the middle traps. Um, you're going to get some upward rotation. So as you can see in this picture with dysfunction of the spinal accessory nerve, dysfunction of the trapezius, you're going to have, um, you're going to see that the scapula tends to sort of fall off laterally. And you can clearly see that in both pictures here. You may or may not see quite as much of the scapular protrusion as you did um, with the serratus anterior uh, dysfunction. Uh, in more rare cases, um, such as with dorsal scapular injury or dysfunction of the rhomboid, you, you may also see a form of scapular winging um, laterally, and we'll show that in a picture here in a minute. The rhomboid acts to um, pull the scapula medially. So typically for lateral scapular winging, specifically spinal accessory nerve injury, most commonly this happens due to injury to the spinal accessory nerve during neck dissection. So oftentimes these patients will have a clear history, um, a clear timeline that correlates with that surgery. Many times it's due to traction from retractors, and so a lot of these do um, recover spontaneously with time. But in cases of a, of a clear laceration, you may not see that good recovery. Here's an example of some lateral scapular winging due to rhomboid injury. And you can see in this picture, it's less that the, uh, less that the scapula sort of falls off um, falls off away uh, in, a, in a more um, caudal direction, but really you can see the medial border, uh, the lower, sorry, the inferior angle of the scapula is um, translating laterally. 
So in thinking about uh, needle EMG locations, we're going to be looking for neuropathic findings again at the trapezius, and you can look in the upper trapezius, the middle, or the lower. Um, in fact, in, in injury cases where you're getting reinnervation findings, which will typically reinnervate from a pro in a proximal to distal pattern, you may be able to trace recovery patterns as you needle from upper to middle to lower traps. Um, and on the right, you can see a, a location for rhomboid needling. So how do we treat these injuries? Typically, it's going to be supportive. So we're thinking physical therapy, maintenance of range of motion, um, neuromuscular electrical stimulation can help facilitate um, proper function, uh, and time. Serial EMGs may help to guide prognosis and treatment options um, in cases where you're not seeing appropriate nerve or muscle recovery, um, both on EMG and on exam. You, you might consider bringing a surgeon in um, because there are there have been described at least um, long thoracic and spinal accessory um, nurse transfer versus tendon transfer options for these patients. Here are my references.